Good morning. Um, this is the second lecture about parasitology, and today we are going to talk about helminths. Now, um, helminths, uh, like uh, what helminths, helminths means, um, they are like in medicine we call the worms or the parasitic worms as helminths. Okay. Uh, now, this word helminths, uh, like to tell you, uh, like. Uh, these are basically the name given to all the worms um, what you can say uh, to to all the worms you know we we call them we call them as helminths okay so uh, uh, basically um, they are grouped as uh, okay so uh, like let's start again um, like uh, other than talking about helminths i will tell you that you know we uh, there are two groups you can say one is the protozoas which you were studying and which you will study as well and then there are helminths so uh, protozoas as like you know what is amoeba what is protozoa what is ciliates like simply the one which have cilia uh, and uh, sporozoa are the, those like uh, you have done malaria plasmodium um, amoeba or which you have done antamoeba histolytica already and flagellates which have flagellas like Jadia, which you have already done and that's why I picked this photo like you you are quite familiar with these things and then there are helminths which are called as worms and uh, when we talk about helminths basically um, there are two main groups one are called as flat worms and one are called as nematodes okay and the flat worms are basically further classified into um, you can say the trematodes as well as cystodes okay uh, cystodes and trematodes and then there is one more class called as nematodes so uh, basically there are two groups you can say one is flat worms okay and one is uh, what you can say the nematodes okay the flat worms are further classified into two main groups like one is called as cystodes which are basically tape worms and one is called as trematodes Okay, which are also called as fluke worms. So, helminths, there are two classes nematodes, okay, nematodes and flat worms. So, flat worms are further divided into two main categories one is trematodes, which are also called as fluke worms, one is cystodes, which are also called as tape worms. Uh, okay, here you can see the classification which I'm talking about helminths, two groups. One is nematodes or round worms, one is platyhelminths or flat worms. Platy means flat, okay? So, or you can say flat worms and round worms. Flat worms are further classified into cystodes and trematodes, or you can say tape worms and fluke worms. Nematodes have two subclasses. One of the subclass is called as adenophoria. And the other subclass is also called as secrinitinia, or you can simply say that round walls or nematodes have two main things. One is that mature in humans, the other one which fail to mature in humans, okay? So the one which mature in humans are basically these two groups, okay? You can see intestinal and tissues and the one which can which fail to mature in humans are like the cutaneous and the visceral forms so of course like we are going to uh, study each one of them so what are the difference between the protozoa and the helminths like the protozoa they are unicellular they are single cell for all functions like amoeba they move by pseudopodia flagellates they which move by flagella ciliates which move by cilia and the last one which are tissue parasites okay and helminths, which are multicellular, of course, like they have specialized cells uh, because they are multicellular. So they have like for each function, they have specialized cells and like the same thing, they are round worms and flat worms. So round worms, which are nematodes, they are elongated, cylindrical or unsegmented and flat worms, which are further classified into trematodes and cystodes. One is tape-like, one is leaf-like. Okay, so the one which are tape like they are segmented, when which, when which are leaf like they are unsegmented. There is no segments. I will show the photographs and then <clears throat> you would understand what I'm what I'm talking about. Uh, so again, this is like the classification for the intestinal parasites. Okay, so protozoa, 
helminths protozoas again the same thing okay which uh, we you had done many of them and helminths which are nema helminths and platy helminths and platy means flat so nema helminths uh, there are ascaris lumbricoids we'll study that entropius formicularis we will talk about that uh, ankylostomas nectar americanus strongyloids stercoralis and trichuralis trichura okay and platy helminths which are further classified into trematodes and cystodes okay so cystodes are the tape forms trematodes are the fruit forms okay so you can see tinea saginata tinea solium and there are uh, many others okay so uh, let's let's talk about the differences between these three okay so see here there is nematodes here there is um, uh, what you can say a trematodes and here there is cystodes or you can say the tape forms uh, the fluke forms and these are the nematodes so uh, as you can see uh, cystodes um, uh, very very important very easy thing to remember you know which are segmented and which are unsegmented see the trematodes which are leaf like so they are the unsegmented one because they look like a leaf but the tape forms which are look like a tape you know they they have small small segments so they are segmented and nematodes they are simply cylindrical they are elongated so they are unsegmented okay uh, just to show you uh, here how they look like uh, i would be uh, showing you for example nematode okay nematodes how they how they look like so now um, you can see over here this is a nematode okay so uh, these all are nematodes okay so see the nematode this is cylindrical uh, this is elongated okay so uh, this one so that's why nematodes they are cylindrical and elongated and they are unsegmented you cannot see segments over here okay whereas the cystodes and trematodes or simply platy helminths which is the other group they are flattened or tape like or leaf like that's why this one is cylindrical this is the other group and that one which are flat that's why they are called as platy platy helminths okay and they are called as nemato helminths like they are elongated and uh, cylindrical type okay so um now in this one there is body cavity okay and they have a complete elementary canal so nematodes or nemato helminths they are they have a complete elementary canal okay on the other hand if i will show you platy helminths in that one i can show you anything like cystode okay um, cystode if you will see over here this is a cystode okay this one pay attention on this one this is a cystode okay so see uh, you can say cystode they are tape like see tape like and see you can see the segments okay okay in cystodes there is no body cavity and their elementary canal either it is absent or either it is incomplete okay so they are flattened okay they are tape like you can see all over here okay all over here uh, one very important tape form i will show you you can see here okay see it's tape like it's segmented okay and it don't have a body cavity here or it have a incomplete elementary canal and uh, the last one which i will show you is uh, leaf like trematode trematode you can see they are leaf like okay they are also unsegmented and they look like a leaf you can see like leaf and again they don't have body cavity and they have incomplete or absent elementary uh, tract okay so uh, this is this is a trematode the previous one which i show you is a cystode tape like and the first one which i show you is uh, what you can say the nematode okay so nematode so you can see over here this is nematode cylindrical and elongated so 
Uh, now you can see over here, nematode they are elongated cylindrical and unsegmented, cystode they are tape like segmented and trematode they are leaf like unsegmented. So again like you, you can see a lot of features or differences you can see over here. Uh, like of course this is one class and this is other class. This is also called as nemat nemato helminths and they are also called as platy helminths. Okay, here you can see over here. Platy helminths and nemato helminths. So now you know how they look like. They look like cylindrical, they are elongated, they are flattened. So trematodes, they look like a leaf. This one, they look like a tape. Okay. So you can see the head end of nematodes, they hooks and suckers are absent. They have well-developed buccal capsule with teeth or cutting plates seen in some species. Okay. Whereas trematodes, their suckers are present, but no hooks are there. Whereas in cystodes, the suckers are present. Some have attached hooks as well. Elementary canal is absent in cystodes. In trematodes, they are present, but they are incomplete. They, they don't have anus. And nematodes, they have complete with anus. And body cavity, okay, they both have no body cavity. Both are absent, but in this one, they it is present and it is known as pseudo seal. Sex in both of them, the sex are not separate, okay, except there is one exception, okay, schistosoma. And in nematodes, there is they have different sex, the male and female. The life cycle uh, requires two hosts in this one, requires three hosts, except schistosoma, which require two hosts, okay. And in this one, again, there is one exception, which is diphollo botrium blatum, which have three hosts, and nematode they just require one host, okay. So, except filarial worms, I will show you like which required two hosts. So, uh, very easy to remember, guys, the differences. Okay, uh, if you will remember, like in this way, uh, the body cavities and the anal canal, like the elementary canal, like you can remember what what are these, right? So, and uh, now, um, uh, <laughs> like you know, like uh, in class cystos, they don't have elementary canal, and they their head carries the sucker. And some of them they have hooks as well. Okay, some of them they have hook as well. Whereas the class trematodes, uh, they uh, possess suckers, but they don't have hooks, right? And they they are leaf-like. So and now, uh, some of them you know, uh, they like uh, okay. One of the thing, by the way, about helminths, which I wanted to talk about, is about their reproduction cycle. Okay. Of course, like their re their reproduction cycle is different from uh, species to species, but uh, uh, they lay eggs. Okay, many of them they have larva stage. Okay, so like uh, they have larva stage and then they have mature stage. Okay, so that that's the important thing. And all of them, you know, they lay eggs. Some of them they lay eggs daily. Some of them they lay eggs uh, more than one time every day. Some of them they lay, lay egg like after two or three days. So uh, now, uh, of course, like here we are not going to talk about like how many of them they lay eggs like every day or all this. Of course, like that that's not important, uh, by the way. Uh, but like all of them they have the larva forms, okay, and uh, all of them, uh, what you can say, some of them they are able to mature. In humans and some of them they they are not able to mature in humans okay so uh, now uh, we are going to discuss uh, each of them one by one and uh, how we are going to start with is the tapeworms okay so in this one we will tapeworms or you can say cystodes okay cystodes of course they are also called as tapeworms okay so cystodes or tapeworms you know they look like tape and they are segmented okay um, now um, the important thing about uh, the cystodes or tape form, of course, like uh, they are many tape forms, uh, which can cause what you can say, uh, or cystodes which are which are present. For example, um, there is um, tinea solium. Okay, uh, so now tinea solium are basically those which are present in uh, pork okay uncooked pork the people they can get infection in this one from this one 
and then there is um, tinea sagi nata uh, which like you can get infection when uh, you can consume um, undercooked meat from lamb okay so um, of course like there is differentiating point for these uh, these one okay uh, as well so uh, of course like there is a lot of types of this one okay uh, tinea solium tinea saginata okay uh, and all these things okay so there is a lot of uh, thing uh, what you can say differences the important one i'm telling you is tinea solium tinea saginata and one uh, important is also called as typhylobotrium okay botrium this is also one of the important form of what you can say uh, tape form or cystodes okay so uh, basically from where the word cystodes comes come from um, you know cystodes they are like in greek it is also called as ribbon like okay so that's why they are tape like so they are ribbon like so they're they, that's why they are called as cystodes so basically cystodes you know they have two classes one is called as pseudo one is called as cyclo okay so uh, simply uh, this diphyllum bit uh, botrium is also called as pseudo phylidia means which means uh, pseudo uh, you know what is the meaning of pseudo and uh, this ones are also called as cyclo okay uh, phylidia so now uh, to start with um, like in this lecture like there will be one lecture about uh, um, tinea saginata and tinea solium okay and because they are very important one so I am going to talk about them later in the next lecture but uh, in this lecture we are going to talk about diphyllobotrum um, letum okay so we will in this lecture we are going to discuss about this one diphyllobotrum letum so now We will take one more slide. So, in this one, we are going to talk about diphylobotrium latum. Okay. Um, now, uh, the the common name of this diphylobotrium latum is also fish tape form. Okay. Like this is the common name of uh, this this class this this uh, parasite. And why it is called as fish tape form uh, because uh, uh, you know like this one have a cycle related to fish okay and uh, the the man they acquire the infection when they uh, take it from the fresh water fish okay so that's why it is called as uh, this thing so let me um, add up a photo in the slide okay just to sorry uh, just to uh, tell you how how these these patients uh, they complete their cycle okay wait okay yes this one I don't oh no actually the Okay, so uh, again, this one is taken from the CDC, right? Uh, this this photograph is taken from CDC, and see, like uh, the definitive host ingest this one from infected fish, okay, or the freshwater fish. So uh, now, uh, to uh, first of all, like uh, I will tell you, uh, this one, like this dive follow bottom letter, you know, um, it have a adult worm. Okay, it present as a adult worm, and uh, uh, which is like ivory in color. It is very long. Okay. Okay, it is very long, and uh, sometimes it can measure up to ten meters. Okay, and it is the largest worm. It is the largest worm or largest tapeworm which can be found in human intestine. Okay. So it is very 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 long one you can see over here okay one good thing about which i like about cdc and that's why i take it from the 
their website is because you know the, you, you will found like the diagnostic stage and the infective stage like they give these signs okay so uh, this adult tape form it have uh, you can say three uh, parts uh, the neck the scolex scolex means head the neck and the rest of the body strobilia strobila strobila okay so uh, they, their head basically or scolex look like a spoon shaped spoon shaped head is there okay uh, by the way again i want to show you the the photograph of this one uh, so that you must understand what i'm talking about diaphylobotrum botrium latum okay so uh, once you, when you will see this one see it have a spoon shaped type of head uh, okay many of these photographs is you know the real photographs like how when they, they see it under the microscope but uh, wait i will show you a better picture of this one okay if i found any any one okay tape form type for about three and tape form so unfortunately like i couldn't found any photograph of their head okay yes this one okay so this is the neck this is the scolex okay and this is the rest of the body okay so uh, now the important thing here is you know um, it have like see the suckers the hook everything is there right you can see over here even here like this this photograph you can see right so see the neck is thin and then there is what you can say all the rest of the body okay and uh, this one is like segments a lot of segments you can see over here okay uh, now uh, the important thing uh, to mention over here is the life cycle okay how uh, this these this organism it represent so the definitive host in this one is a man a dog or even other things as well okay the first intermediate host is basically this thing and the second intermediate host is the fish okay so see what happens uh, the adult worm which is which lives in what you can say uh, in the small intestine of the, of the man you know and it lays eggs okay so when it lays eggs you know the eggs basically can pass through the feces okay and can go into what you can say the water okay and of course like it is not just the man but like all these animals also play a role okay in this thing so uh, see many fish eating mammals and birds are definitive hosts so the humans eat fish the dog eat fish and even like uh, this ducks you know they also eat fish so they have this tape form in their intestines and this inter this tape form can leave they can lay eggs and you know these freshly eggs uh, which are also basically you can see <clears throat> which are passed in feces unembryonated eggs passed in feces of definitive host okay and of course like this, like this see this one that diagnostic stage because we can see the eggs under the microscope so uh, these eggs they basically they embryonate okay inside in the water okay so when these immature embryo uh, immature eggs okay they are passed in in the water okay so in water it takes around 10 to 15 days okay to mature okay so in the water it takes around 10 to 15 days to 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 mature okay so what happens is uh, basically when they mature and they become ciliated you can see this one okay so when they get mature they become ciliated you can see a lot of cilias are there okay so <clears throat> see and now they are ingest ingested by their first intermediate host which are cyclops okay so when they become mature they become ciliated and they are ingested by these cyclops which are the first intermediate host so what happens in the cyclops once they are ingested okay so uh, which are their first 
uh, intermediate host okay so uh, they uh, penetrate their body cavity and in about three weeks you know it is transformed into the second form okay which is a elongated form so this is the you can say the second stage or second larva stage okay it is elongated stage see look they are elongated so uh, now uh, this larva again they are present in this one so what happens like simply uh, this cyclops are now eaten by the fishes okay and when these cyclops are eaten by the fishes which is the second intermediate host so the first intermediate host they take this one and they grow in this one and they become elongated and then this cyclops they are eaten by the fish okay so when they eat the fish so see infective crustacean ingested by second intermediate host usually small fish okay and this at this stage you can see the name it is called as uh, pleurocircoid larva or procircoid larva you know they are released from the crustaceans develop into the pleurocorcoid larva see they are in the elongated form so they are around uh, one to two centimeter long so of course now the small fish is eaten by a big fish okay and when this big fish they eat the small fish of course like they take this larva inside them and what happens when this big fish or the freshwater fish is um, eaten by the humans they can get the infection okay so uh, that's of course like that's how the life cycle is completed so again the man acquire the infection not just the man but the other mammals as well so simply they acquire the infection by consuming the fish okay which have what which have plea circoid larva which are the big one okay and then this tapeworm will stay inside the intestines of the man and develop into the adult worm and they will keep on laying eggs and these eggs are going to uh, go or pass in the feces okay and once they pass into the feces what will happen they will leave they will they will be they will reach the um, fresh water okay and in the fresh water it takes around one to two weeks for them to hatch out okay once they are going to hatch out they they will be mature and they will be they will have a lot of cilia on them or they have a ciliated epithelium and we call it as what coracidia okay so this coracidia are basically taken by cyclops okay and this cyclops you know it which is the first intermediate host uh, it keep on growing in there inside them and what happens like these cyclops are taken by the small fish and the small fish is taken by the big fish or sometimes even like the human can consume the big fish as well as as well as as well as the small fish so whatever like the human they contract that contact that larva from the fish right so uh, this is how uh, the life cycle is completed so we are the definitive host the dogs are also the definitive host then there is the first intermediate host okay uh, which is the cyclops and then there is a second intermediate host which is the freshwater fish fish which could be salmon or which could could be uh, trout okay mm -hmm. so this is how their life cycle is completed okay uh, so now uh, what this uh, what you can say uh, this tapeworm do in the in the in the in the humans okay that's important like how it causes the disease right that's the important thing to understand so uh, now the disease causing uh, what you can say uh, affect basically depends on the mass of the worm how many worms are present inside the uh, inside the intestine and simply what this worms do is basically whatever you are eating in the form of food if they if the worms they will eat all of the uh, nutrients of course like you will be having lack of nutrients okay so now of course like in many of the patient the, this one remains asymptomatic okay like doesn't cause any symptoms okay uh, mm. and sometimes when the mass is too much big it can cause obstruction 
of the intestine okay like see it's a surgical problem when it causes obstruction of the intestine so many of the people that remains asymptomatic many of the people it causes obstruction of the intestines okay um, now many of the people they have abdominal um, discomfort okay because of uh, there is worms inside inside the abdomen so they have abdominal discomfort they may have diarrhea um, they may have uh, nausea okay um, they may have weakness they may have weight loss okay they can present with weakness they can present with weight loss and they may have anemia as well okay so uh, this thing is important so now uh, of course like the the worms they are taking the nutrients uh, from the food or from the uh, to maintain to meet up their metabolic demands they are going to take the things from from the human body right now when you will study something called as pernicious anemia you will found or like vitamin b12 deficiency anemia you will found that one of the cause of vitamin b12 deficiency anemia is basically this one diphenylbutyrin retin and that's the important importance of this condition that's why i'm teaching you this thing okay because um what happens that uh, you know this one uh, this tape form basically absorb large quantities uh, of uh, vitamin um, b12 are consumed okay uh, by this what you can say uh, by this uh, parasite so when they keep on consuming a lot uh, a large quantity of vitamin b12 so it takes a lot of time for the humans to develop vitamin b12 deficiency so simply the humans they become deficient in vitamin b12 and that's why they can develop vitamin b12 deficiency anemia so that's a very 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 important thing you know uh, <clears throat> consumed by diphylo uh, philopotrum okay so that's the very important thing to remember about this one like it can result into vitamin b12 deficiency anemia okay so um, <clears throat> that's the important thing uh, by the way i can i can put this uh, include this uh, what you can say um, uh, this slide here for your reference if you if many of you because many of you you want slides so of course like you can have a look on this thing okay so how we diagnose okay diagnosis of this thing so very easy diagnosis guys see uh, the eggs are present in the stool and you can see from this one the diagnostic stage so what we can do we can take the stools sample okay stool sample and we can do microscopy of that okay so stool microscopy can be done and when when you will do the stool microscopy uh, what you will found in them is you can found in them eggs okay so because the eggs are laid in a large number and they pass in the feces and that's a very easy way of diagnosis this one okay and other test the diagnosis of this thing is very easy is like the serological test serological test can be done so what a serological test again we can check the antigen of this one okay so antigen testing can be done for this thing for this this one okay so that's the important thing and guys how to treat this condition what is the treatment of this one treatment is very simple as well so simply it causes vitamin b12 deficiency in anemia so provide vitamin b12 okay so of course because it it it, it result into uh, vitamin b12 deficiency and how to kill this one the name of the drug, drug is preziquantel okay preziquantel just one dose is enough and the good thing you don't have to remember the dosages even so just one dose of preziquantel is going to uh, what you can say uh, kill this and deworm we also call it as deworming okay so uh, how to avoid this thing eat properly cooked meals or cooked fish in this case okay of course so uh 
uh, this is the important thing. Now, one important thing, guys, you know, salmon fish. Salmon fish uh, is basically many of the people, many people, you know, they eat salmon fish without cooking. So uh, whenever you have to eat salmon fish without cooking, so deep freeze that, okay? Deep freezing, you know, deep freezers are there. So uh, we have to basically freeze the fish for like less than 10 degrees centigrade uh, for around 48 hours, okay, to make sure like this should not survive. So deep freeze the fish if to be consumed um, uncooked. So that's important point, okay. So that's very important. And of course, like uh, proper sewage uh, uh, disposals, disposal should be done. Uh, what is proper sewage disposal? Like, of course, like the feces should not go into the fresh water so that the fish or the cyclops cannot have, can, can, can consume those eggs, okay? So, uh, remember it is the longest tape form found in the, in the man. Could be up to 10 meters in length, okay? And they have spoon-shaped head with two straight like grooves on that called as pothria, okay? So this is the important thing to remember. I hope you understand this condition. Very interesting and very easy, by the way. So thank you so much, guys, for listening.